So to get started uh, for this week's community call, um, we have a feature demo. And this is one I'm really excited about. We have um, a lab who wants to work with us uh, in order to publish like live lab notes. So the idea here is an electronic lab notebook that's tied to the ability to um, make the notes public and then earn research coins for them. So Thomas, you want to take it away? Walk, walk through what we have so far? Uh, sure, yeah. Here, let me join the call on my desktop. And then this is also like a, a pretty early V1. So the idea here is if we show it to this lab, like if there's anything minimal that's like super obvious that you all think that we should include for like the most minimal thing that we could show the lab in order to get them started. Okay. Um, you guys see? Yep, looking good. Yeah, so this is um, kind of like the freeform editor that we have for it. Um, yeah, basically, this is like where you can keep your lab notes and um, it's sort of, it's using kind of like the same editor that we're using for the posts right now, uh, the CK editor. So it has a lot of nice features like uh, code blocks, tables, lists, all the stuff you'd expect. Um, it's also the, the remove format button that I know uh, some of you have been asking for. Um, yep, so you can embed like links, photos, videos. Um, you'll be able to like comment on stuff in the editor in line and then like uh, you can see suggestions, kind of like how Google Docs has it. Uh, this feature basically uh, will be supported as well. And yep, so this feature is going to be available for users as well as organizations or labs. Um, so you can have like a personal notebook here, kind of like Notion, if you if you've used that at all. And yep, you can create notes and. Eventually, we'll probably let you like uh, put these inside of each other, like folders, something like that. But yeah, this is kind of like the early V1 of it. So, yep. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, how did you create again, like the the new tab? I couldn't see. Uh, Right now, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. there's just uh, create a new note button here at the bottom. We might move this up possibly, but we'll yeah. just like have a button here to create a new note. But yeah, just going off the designs right now, basically. Oh, and I should show something cool. Um, so I'm gonna open this in like a different tab, but this is like a collaborative editor. So um, I don't know if you guys, yeah, yeah, okay. You can see, but this is a, I'm doing this on like a different tab. Um, so basically it's like Google Docs where two people can edit at once. Uh, you can see like the other cursor here, it's highlighting stuff. So yeah, I'm doing this off screen on like a different tab, but you can basically collaborate in, inside these notebooks as well. So yeah. And eventually we'll want people to be able to like publish these notes possibly and like share them around on the site as well. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, it looks nice, but it doesn't look like a lab notebook right now, in my opinion. I think it's, right. it's normal, of course, because it's you, you want to keep it quite simple at first, but like, 
yeah. like calling it notes yeah I, right. yeah maybe it works but yeah uh in for like the this yeah this is kind of just like the version one of it uh eventually we're going to add more like electronic lab notebook features into it like uh you'll be able to like write code and evaluate it within the editor kind of like what google collab has so can i ask you a question really quick um because this is definitely reminds me a lot of notion or like other note taking apps when, when you yeah. say like not very lab notebooky are, are you saying like kind of on like a skin level almost like how how like we actually lay out the editor here like if we added like a a fake like binder ring you know around the side or something you know was it purely aesthetic or are you thinking like actual functionality yeah more like uh, actual functionality i think like uh but I, I guess you guys will uh, do that in the future, but like import, incorporating like maps on the left side and stuff like now it looks just like notes and notes and notes and I can't really organize anything. Um, also, like if I want uh, anyone else to join my lab notebooks, would I invite them just by email like a Google Docs or do they need to be a member of a research hub and invite a profile, let's say? Um, so we're still working on the specifics there, but yeah, if it's, if you have like an organization, like you're part of a lab, then there, there's a way to set it up so that like people who are part of the lab already have access to the, the all the notes within the lab, but we'll also have like that Google Docs style, send an email and then invite them to come edit or view it. So yeah. Do you use any, uh, like current software electronic lab books, like a Benchling or Deep Note or something like that? No, it's been quite some time. Uh, don't use it. So maybe someone else, maybe Anton or Nami knows more about this. For me, some time ago. You mentioned, Philip, there was like something on the left side that was missing. What, what was it? Can you repeat that again? Yeah, like, uh, for instance, uh, folders and stuff like uh, so I can organize because now it's like all different notes. And then in the end, I want to get my note from a while back and I can't find it anymore. Yeah, we'll probably add some way to like nest the notes or folders for the notes, something like that. Keep them organized. And maybe can we like, also drag yeah. them to rearrange their order. Not right now. Yeah, right now it's just like ordered by date, basically. But you can look into that for sure. Uh, OK, yeah, so that's the short demo, basically. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. It, it seems like this is like uh, like minimal enough to get them going. And then we'll be able to get feedback on like their exact use case from, from like them actually using it. Cool. Uh, so the next thing that I wanted to chat about is um, we shipped the author claiming feature. So um, when you're on a profile now, you can uh, like actually on the paper, if the authors are loaded appropriately, you can uh, claim uh, an author profile and earn RSC for that. Um, we ended up changing the design a little bit to make it look like slightly less crypto-y. And so we plan on having uh, a little bit of educational content, like next to the research coin symbol. That's like, hey, like, what is RSC? Hopefully trying to hook um, anyone who's interested into like reading a Notion page that has more information. Um, when it comes to like the content that would be included in a pop up, what do you all think should be there um, for like just hooking people to learn more about RSC? Like what determines its value, how it's being distributed, how many research coins are there in existence, how many are being created, how regularly, to who are they distributed, stuff like that. Okay, cool. So that's like, uh, they normally throw this under the category of like tokenomics of like, mm -hmm. 
questions are there like how much is the circulating supply like what why would anybody actually buy this thing um okay so i guess Kobe, that how many questions do you think we can get away with answering like in the pop-up um i think probably like three or four or something like that at most uh yeah i i would like to have some like graphics to visually portray the things so you know if that you include that maybe three or four something like that do you all think mentioning ethereum is helpful here if we're like research coin is an ethereum token like right off the bat or would it be better to say research coin is a way to earn value for creating you know scientific content probably can be very polarized and that's probably what the crypto people want to hear but uh, at the same time that's probably not what the older scientists want to hear and, and in theory this feature would be targeting like scientists who've already written papers where we're trying to motivate them to sign up and like basically answer their emails if people comment on their papers okay then just forget forget about mentioning that it's even crypto <laughs> just, just describe what how how many how people earn it and how can people exchange it or something so far i've got how can you earn it little supply um how could it be exchanged that that may be even a little bit financially um centric and maybe how how to spend what would be a good way to spend it he i mean here on research hub yeah that's great how to spend it is really good um so how to earn total supply how to spend it how it's distributed anything else well the earn and distribute it i i guess it's the same question same yeah i guess the distinction would be like um of the total supply, like how many goes to the team, how many goes to Research Hub Inc., how many goes to like the community for earning stuff versus like the tokens that do go to the community, how are they earned? You know, but but oftentimes the distribution is a little bit too crypto-y, I think, for this. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that I listen to it, probably not shouldn't be in the pop-up, should be should be somewhere explicitly declared, but not in the pop-up. Yeah, I think we can like also have a bigger list of FAQs somewhere like in the pop-up. If you want to know more, go to FAQ um, because now the about section is kind of short, I guess. Like having more titles with like, for instance, if I go to FAQ, I always use my control F or uh, on Apple, I don't know. It's, uh, command F maybe, um, just to search for keywords and stuff. Yeah, totally. Nami, do you know, uh, I would love to move forward with uh, working with the librarian friend that you have um, to help write FAQs. I, I even think their perspective here would be useful in like coming from someone who's maybe not as involved in crypto to know how to phrase these things to appeal to the average academic. Yeah, I'm happy to explore that possibility. OK, cool. Yeah, I'll send you a message afterwards. And like, it would be fun to hop on a call um, and see what they think. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, yeah. OK, so one thing about this one, uh, First, my suggestion is to think about the values for researchers. And I think we are talking about, I think there are two values for researchers. One is to the value for the researchers themselves and that we are talking, we are talking about. It's money, like it's good, it's financial, everything. The other value that we, I think, haven't explored is the value for the others research community. And I'm thinking for this user base who are kind of senior, they don't care about their own gains anymore. Maybe they might. but you know, more focused on creating a research community for others. So if you can highlight that value for others by having me having a token would eventually contribute to others research might also be a good avenue to explore. Yeah, I, so that's a great suggestion because even if we approach it from the perspective of like, hey, research coin rewards are gonna incentivize open science, which will make like science better for everyone. 
I think hitting that value prop is important. Um, so you're thinking not even like in a purely open science perspective, you're thinking about how can this coin actually help, you know, my colleague make research like by, by donating it or whatever. Yeah, like you can do something about uh, like the helping the researchers that the matters the most or like giving more voice to the who are who you think you haven't had a voice to uh, you know in the community or something like that uh, just signaling that value might be a little bit beneficial and balancing that with the personal gains might be important i really like that i think you can incorporate that into the how to spend like so basically like make it so like th there are free examples of how you can spend research coin. For example, you can support this obscure paper that doesn't get funding somewhere else. Another example, you can support this uh, like la lab note history or like, I don't know how to call it, like br branching open report or whatever. Or maybe you can also support the preprint if you get this functionality back at some version something like that yeah totally I, I like that a lot that's really helpful guys um hitting it from like the how does this help the community perspective i think is super important so we should definitely do that kobe do you have any other uh thoughts here before we move on like do you think this is enough information for us to go on um yeah i i do think so i think we can take that and we can definitely design something yeah um pat not sure if you had anything else to add no, nothing else to add right now. <clears throat> cool. Um, so the last thing that we want to do today is uh, we've been trying to uh, optimize the mobile design in order to make it easier to use and try and help conversions. So um, we have like a refresher of the homepage that we'd like to show you and ask a couple questions to what you all think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'll share my screen. Yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a quick overview. In case you forgot from last week, um, let me know when you can sh see my screen. But you, guys, you guys can see it, right? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I'll zoom in. I just wanted to give you guys just a bit of information. So the reason why we chose to optimize the homepage is uh, just to keep it in mind. So a few reasons. So Reason number one, if you go to researchhub.com on a home on a mobile device, you'll see that the content is really pushed to the bottom. So you'll see like half of the first paper showing up. If you have like an iPhone 10, if you have like a Samsung phone like that's older, older Android, you might not even see the first paper. Um, so we wanted to optimize that so you know more meaningful content shows up near the top. Also wanted to surface a few things that kind of are obvious in desktop, like for example, hubs, the whole concept of a hub. We wanted to show, uh, make that available in mobile as well. So when you go and you can see it, um, and yeah, I want to optimize more of vertical space and give people information about what Research Hub is all about. So people that are logged out. So we took it, um, we did some work on both the homepage and the paper page. It's in progress. It's like what I'm going to show you, what actually is going to happen is going to be like a hybrid. Uh, we're we're going to go with like a hybrid, a little bit of this, a little bit of that kind of thing. But what I want to do is show you what we have and um, get your thoughts on, on it. See like if there is like any glaring thing that's missing or something like that. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, long story short, let's just jump into it. So uh, we have four designs. So this is the first design. As you can see here, there's like a, a drop down where you can basically select a hub. Uh, it's not currently available in mobile. So you can now do it, select the hub, see some stuff within the hub. Um, then option number two, uh, kind of like hiding that, uh, conserving more vertical space by having the filter button, you click on it, then this thing shows up. Uh, also having a little bit of icons next to each entity. 
don't love these icons, but just you know, keep in mind the idea of an icon uh, to to kind of like uh, showcase uh, more visually what each thing is. Um, then option number three, a little bit, uh, I think, uh, moving on a little bit nicer is basically conserving more vertical space by going the more Reddit route of having like a drop down, uh, a little Chevron thingy, you click on it, then you can see like uh, a list of hubs, you can choose from them. Um, still need to think through what's going to ha happen. Like we have a lot of hubs, right? We want to be able, probably need to have like a little search thingy in here to allow you to search for like a specific hub that doesn't show up uh, in the top. But the point is you can just do it from here. Um, How do, I have a question, a quick question. How do the selected hubs look like in here? Are they going to like be check marked or let's say I, I subscribe to computer science? Yeah, so the thing, so this is, um, so when you're, when you're like already subscribed, so let's say is a log, this is like more specifically for a logged out experience, but yeah, let's say you're going to be um, logged in and you have some hubs you subscribe to, we will probably just show you um, maybe a little subscribed text next to it. I think it's a good point. Um, something like that ne near each hub. And maybe we show all the subscribed ones at the top and then everything else below it. Uh, just a thought, but something like that. Um, and yeah, I think like uh, another, th another thing to keep in mind is that if you go to research hub on like, uh, let's go to a mobile view you see my hubs and all so maybe we don't need this anymore right maybe like uh this approach we go with is the new way to see my hubs i don't know i'm not saying that that's the case but um th there might be like an, an explicit option that shows you my hubs uh, not sure um it's uh still still thinking through it, um, but yeah. And the fourth option, not, you know, obviously the greatest, you, you scroll horizontally here, right? To uh, to see hubs, it doesn't scale because obviously there's a lot of hubs, but the nice thing here is uh, we're, we're really conserving a lot of vertical space by putting the text that will show up here at the top. Um, so, Long story, we'll probably take a hybrid of everything. So I wouldn't be too concerned about the design because we it's the first iteration and we're going to like, you know, like uh, put it all together into like a nice meatball and make it uh, look good. However, a couple questions for, oh, and yeah, before we ask some questions, so like, Another um, thing that we wanted to do, a couple of things. So thing number one, we wanted to um, highlight comments or so papers that have comments. We want people to know about them, right? So we want to show, uh, we decided to really turn the top part of each card into like representing the state of a paper. So you can have like that many hub votes and uh, these many comments and delineate in one way or another. I don't love this delineation, but delineate what type of card it is. Is it a post, is it a paper, whatever it may be. So we think that's important. And we want people to that are logged out, people coming to Research Hub for the first time to get a sense of what Research Hub is all about. So we wanted to show a more enticing like, um, ad, not an ad, but like a banner uh, to kind of like capture what it's all about. We're still working through text, um, but we think like these visuals are much nicer than what we have at the moment. So I know I spoke for a while. I have some questions for you guys, but before I go into them, anything that pops at you that you want to like bring up? 
first of all, to me, it looks like great work, really nice features. Uh, like at the end, the Google stuff, but like the adding the comments or the type of posts, like paper posts, that's something I really miss. Like on the uh, when I log into my PC as well, just a web based version, I, I think it could use that as well. Um, mm -hmm. The only thing I think about is like when you now show us the, the user interfaces, it's quite long, so it's not like a single screen shot, let's say. How much of like if you show like the first things you showed us, how much of the papers underneath w would I be able to see? Mm. Like because, at a glance, you yeah. Mean, like, yeah. So right now you can see like half of the first one or something like that. So ideally, you should see two. Okay. Um, I think at least two. That would be very very nice because that can give you. A little bit of content that makes you more excited to scroll. Uh, yeah. Yeah. W could, can you do the thing that some mobile websites do where if you scroll down, like the, the menu at the top will kind of like minimize the this the everything? Thing? Yeah. The research hub, the trend, and even the all papers and posts. So you will, we will be only left with just the names of the posts until you scroll up and then the menu reemerges. The names of the post. So like, uh, let's go research hub right now. We scroll like only the top navigation shows. Oh, it already, oh okay. So it already, okay, hide. Can, can we hide the, I guess, would it make sense to hide the research hub as well? The logo. Um, what we're thinking is actually, at the moment, one idea that we had this morning is keep the logo. However, replace this, keep the flask thingy, replace the research hub text with like the text representing the hub you're currently on, as well as having like a Chevron drop down that allows you to change it. So let's say you're scrolling and you want to change it. You don't have to go back to the top. You can just like click this drop down, change it, and continue your um browsing uh if that makes sense yeah <laughs> mm. but um yeah i do have some questions for you guys so the first question i know i know we're all almost out of time so uh if you guys don't mind saying like four more minutes like how how important is the abstract like snippet for you guys in mobile especially so I guess in desktop, it is nice to visually to see it. But like, if you look at other sites like Reddit, they don't do it. We're not kind of, we're trying to be more scientific. So yeah, maybe it makes sense to show an abstract. But then again, do you guys ever read the abstract snippet? Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking as you, as we were discussing it just now. And also you can probably get rid of well, well, date added. Maybe you can push it to the top right corner or something, mm -hmm. so it doesn't take extra vertical space. Maybe yeah. get get rid of the participated people icons. Yes, yes, yes. And get rid of that, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're thinking of putting these um, at least in the same line as these hubs. But uh, yeah, definitely saving some space. I like the idea of moving it to the top. So the abstract, Anton, uh, what, what about the rest of you guys? Do you guys ever like read this abstract or do you only look at the titles? It's honestly, un I'm sorry, but it's unusable in the form it's now, right? So it's just half a sentence. Half a sentence, can't, you can't extract anything from it. But what about like in the desktop, let's say? In the desktop, like yes. Well, I don't. <laughs> I read it inside. All right, so, so may I mean, Maybe it's like, um, I don't know, maybe there is like, I don't know, maybe it's, <laughs> you know, obviously this looks much less nice, but maybe we can visually optimize it so it's like it looks a bit nicer, uh, but we get rid of the abstract if it doesn't serve a, a purpose. Um, just a thought. Yeah, I think it looked quite appealing uh, on the web-based version, although I didn't really read it. But like on the mobile version, it's really 
taking up space and it shouldn't mm. do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. We'll figure something out here. But uh, thanks for the feedback. I uh, just wanted to yeah. validate that we're not crazy, that no one is. No, no, you're the same. It, 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 I share a sentiment with Philip. Yeah, it, it looks nice on the desktop version. It's useless, but without it, it looks awkward. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, right. I agree. Yeah, Joyce was the one to bring it up today. Um, and it makes sense. OK, so question number two. Um, yeah, so we're trying to <laughs> capture like the essence of Research Hub. And obviously, there is no easy way to do it. Like visually, we figured out like uh, among among our, ourselves like this morning that number three visually maybe is like a good one because it captures like a bit of a community and it's got the flask thing. So it like pops at you and tells you what kind of visually what we might be up to. Now, when it comes to um, the text, um, not sure, I don't expect you guys to have any like input here, but if you guys if you guys do, then that would be great. Like, what do you guys think we should uh, throw at users when they come to research up for the first time? Any particular text? And I don't expect you guys to say anything really because even this one awkward sentence took me like a good 10 minutes to brainstorm. Yeah, I, I guess I'm thinking what kind of verb do you want it to be? Do you want people to, do you want verbs that con convey that like you are an observer in this? Like you you discover cutting edge science or I, or you are an active participant, you know? Like you, you shape the landscape of cutting edge science by, you know, donating to some scientists and what not. I think it's a good point and uh, I think I think it's a both we want to say like we're a community of both like observers and participants you know what I mean you can be a scientist or you can be just a scientist reading or a scientist contributor yeah something maybe like uh, share and discover cutting edge science or mm, I like it mm, share and discover okay okay Okay, or yeah, something like that, or contribute and discover, uh, contribute to or discover cutting edge science, but not so awkwardly. Con uh, contribute, contribute sounds uh, repulsive to me because it, yeah? it, it, it suggests work. <laughs> oh, okay, that's a good point. Okay, contribute does suggest work. Okay, okay. That's the support. Support. Mm. Okay, so um, let me write this down. You guys have good ideas. Um, so support, we like. Uh, share, we like. Contribute, we don't like. Yeah, discover something like join yeah, our growing discover, community. Discover <laughs> community. Any other words? There are wor yeah, I think words is the best way to brainstorm this, right? Support, discover. Uh, what do you say? Uh, not contribute. Collaborate. Is, is collaborate one? We're not quite there yet, but with the ELN. Yeah, I think collaborate. I, I like collaborate personally. Uh, I like it. Mm, maybe on, not on the front page. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe we'll get you, we'll figure out something to. Um, very happy words to make you just sign up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we'll throw at you like, all right, here's the work. Yeah, so, you're, you're a power user now. Thanks for signing up. <laughs> yeah. Um, OK, thanks, guys. So I think that's, um, that's good. Now, I wanted to, I had like a couple of additional thoughts. Um, I think. Yeah, nah, nah uh, we don't, I think uh, there was like one other thingy I wanted to talk about, but I forget what it was actually. It must have not been super, oh yeah, okay. The other thing is that as a, so as a user who is like coming to Research Hub and using a mobile device, we want them to know about hubs. So we're gonna find a way to make hubs usable uh, in mobile, but I, is there anything about Research Hub that you want 
people to see as soon as they land on the homepage. Uh, something like, I don't know, like the live feed or something like that, that you think people should know? I didn't mention this earlier during our call this morning, but um, I almost always, once I go to the mobile, immediately click the top right button, then go to live. And it normally takes a little while to load. So maybe if live was like one of the tabs, to be able to like see the commentary that's happening in real time, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I, I think I definitely agree because as soon as we left the call, I was like, yeah, the live feed is probably really nice to see. Um, yeah, do you guys agree? Is there any anything else um, in addition to the live feed that you would like to see? You want other people to know about? I wonder too, sorry, not for to take all the suggestions, but something that could be cool here too, and it's a little bit different than these designs, is um, Philip's suggestion for the stories up at the top. If mm -hmm. it was like we only included pictures of comments that had a figure included in it. So then maybe we encourage people to include JPEGs in their comments or something, because you'll end up at the top of the mobile feed. Um, Mm. almost like being able to have a common live feed e even with the live feed sometimes i think like paper posts aren't super helpful and like rsc supporting isn't helpful but like some way to highlight the active discussion i think it'd be really cool yeah do you, have, do you have any data maybe from reddit or something on how the most catchy comment looks like in terms of length what does it include what like one image two images stuff like that can you like can you draw a picture of a perfect comment out there i think um probably based on my years of experience of using reddit and nothing scientific i would say a comment a comment can be like uh well you know in reddit you don't have really um comments are usually text so it could be like as short as like a sentence but are you talking about anton like a post in reddit on like uh just one of the subreddits and stuff like that no, i'm not sure well i think research hub conveys a slightly longer format so i guess the post on reddit would be an equivalent of a top comment on under paper on research hub mm -hmm. maybe Anton, what, what I think would be like the ideal thing to highlight in the story section would be like Dr. Bick's uh, Twitter posts where she's like, oh, hey, here's an image, spot the manipulation. You know, like who, who can find where, you know, this image has been manipulated? Um, I, hmm. I think that would be ideal. Like here's the paper. And then a comment on the paper is Dr. Bick with a screenshot of an image that says, oh, this paper's kind of trash because if you look at figure two, it's clearly manipulated. And then figure two would end up in the stories section that you're scrolling across, you click into it, you get into the paper that Dr. Big commented on. I know you and I have been doing this a little bit, the comments where we screenshot a segment from the paper and upload it, but are we allowed to legally do that? Like take screenshots of figures if it's a uh, open access paper, you can. So uh, I always check. I'm, I don't think that regular users would all the time. Um, we could make it like more apparent to people on the paper page if the license makes it okay for people to do that. But yeah, I mean, I, I think that the best comments so far have been like, like either a picture of a portion of text or a picture of a figure saying, hey, what's going on in this figure? Like, mm hmm yeah, I think these are a good point. Uh, and I think, yeah, so if, if there is anything to it, so I, I think it should go into the criteria of the things we show to users uh, near the top, maybe something with an image that's also upvoted and engaging. Um, and yeah, I think there is like, uh, as Philip mentioned last week, there is definitely room to show stories, but, you know, in a more sciencey way, that's not like, totally Instagram, because we don't want to be that. But uh, there is definitely something in here. I just um, um, need to think about it a little more. Um, yeah, 
I think we, we agreed that, uh, Joyce, just uh, remind me, a conversation this morning, we said like a story is essentially like a post with an image or it could, it sounds like it could also be a comment with an image, right? My preference would be a comment because then the story section could essentially serve as like a comment live feed that's mm -hmm. more attractive because they're images. Um, I think in the future, it could be cool to have posts, but if we want to like increase the weekly active contributors, I think I'd get the most value out of seeing like, you know, where did Anton just comment, you know, and be able to quickly get to that. So that way I could read the paper and maybe respond. I, I see. There is, there are some websites, what they do, I don't know if Reddit does this these days or not, but if, if a comment gets a certain number of upvotes, it is elevated to the status of standalone post. So I wonder if you could make it so that comments become their own posts and, you know, in different category. Hmm. Interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious, uh, Joyce, you mentioned like about the comments that, uh, you're mainly concerned with comments becoming stories. Are, so like, what if there is a comment with no like um, image associated with it, like just a comment, standard comment, it's only text about a paper, but it's really doing really well and it's getting a lot of upvotes. Should that also become a story and should there be a reference image to it that we can infer? Uh, yeah, I think I think if we were getting to the point where there was a comment that didn't have a picture that was super high quality, um, then yeah, I think that would make sense. Um, I don't know if we're there yet, but yeah. the mm -hmm. I, I know yeah. with Reddit too, in the screenshot that I shared in the conversation that you and Phil had, Toby, um, mm -hmm. one of the pictures, it's just like an empty snoo. Like if there was no picture associated with the article, like it's just kind of like a blank looking, like the image is just you know, we would have like an empty research hub logo or something like that. Yeah, kind of like, uh, I guess, S credit or something like that. <laughs> they don't have any pictures in that sense. Yeah, yeah. I think it should be, it should convey the context that it's a commentary to a specific paper. So maybe either have, if there is no, if there is no image, maybe have the image of the journal, like the cover of the journal where it was published, the original paper. Mm. or something generic like uh, a screenshot of an abstract on research hub kind of like from the distance or something you know something like that like you know that conveys that we are going to comment on this entry yeah that makes sense that makes sense i like the the journal <coughs> as a default uh, image i mean the hub right are you talking about the hub or the journal could be i was thinking about the journal so you I don't, do you pull up the journals i think there was an iteration where you did pull up the image of the journal not anymore right i don't know it, it was i remember totally right but yeah we were we were putting like the logos of journals next to um paper cards for a little while yeah so that if you still have pieces of that code <laughs> Yeah, um, we we'll definitely keep it all in mind. And I know we're really over time. It's 15 minutes over. Um, is there anything else you guys wanted to throw at me regarding this stuff? Um, OK, I think we're, we're good then. Thanks, guys, for all your feedback. It's very, very helpful. Thanks for having me do that too, Kobe. Do you guys have any other feedback just in general uh, before we get out of here? Any other thoughts or anything? Uh, just a little point and then we can close off. Uh, just for the ELM feature that you showed us, maybe like uh, Excel plugins and uh, maybe like uh, our studio plugin would be nice. But not just for the web-based version, of course, because having an R Studio plugin for mobile would be useless. Yes. Okay, cool. Hey, thank you. Studio. Okay. I'll look into it. Yeah, thank you, Philip. Okay, cool. Well, thanks again, guys. See you all next week. Thanks. Bye. See you guys.